This is a six month old puppy with a persistent upper deciduous canine tooth. And um, the first thing we want to do when seeing this is evaluate the x-ray to determine how we're going to plan the surgery. In this case, the middle part of this deciduous tooth seems very fragile. So I'm not going to try and do a closed approach. I think it will uh, probably break if I try that. So my um, recommendation is to do a surgical approach. And this is how you can do it. So this is uh, this is a size uh, 15C scalpel. And make this oblique incision all the way down to the bone. I feel with my thumb, you can see the blue finger, I'm feeling the infraorbital bundle coming out, so I'm making sure that I'm not cutting into that part at all. So make some stab incisions around the circumference of this tooth. And use a sharp periosteal elevator to gently pry off the gingiva from this tooth. I switch to a smaller size. So you want to use like a rocking motion instead of a pushing motion. So rocking and see it's, it's fairly loose. So you want to release, scrape all the way down to the bone. Okay, and we want to release a little bit more because we want to be able to drill away this bone without damaging this flap. Make sure you also release the opposite side because you're going to use that small tiny flap you're making here to place your sutures. So this, this uh, piece of gingerbread right here cannot be fully attached to the bone because then you will not be able to place your sutures at a 90 degree angle uh, onto the gingiva. I use a medium grip, a grit diamond burr to gently paint away this very thin bone that are on top of the root. When you see this small little vessels on top of the root, it means that you are very close to the root. This is the periodontal ligament vessels. So when you see those, you are very close and when they are gone, when you drill them away, that means you are on the root surface and you should not be uh, drilling any deeper. And you can see a slight color change. The whitish bone becomes more, a little bit more yellowish tooth root. And my recommendation is to sweep across a little wider than the root is in itself. So you can really see that tooth bone interface. So you start to be able to see a line around that root. So the more bone you take away, and you have to go pretty, pretty much a bit distance back there, distally, to get to the root tip. This is a flexible periotome that I like to use. It's a little bit, it's bending, uh, it's very flexible and it will follow the curvature of this root. So I like it because of that, because it's not rigid. You can use a one millimeter loxator. You can use a periotome. This is almost like a periotome, the periosaw. The thinner, the better. And if it's flexible, it's even, it's even nicer. So make sure to release and loosen each side of this root. And now you can see it's pretty loose. Because I drilled so much bone away, it's fairly easy for me to get it out now. Then just a little bit more push on the palatal side and that should really 
release it fully so I can grab it with my forceps or maybe sometimes even my fingers to get it out. Don't worry about the bleeding. It will stop. We don't need to spend time trying to make it stop. Not at all. Uh, diffusely, when it's bleeding diffusely, that's fine. If you're seeing pulsating bleeding, that's when you want to put some pressure on it. So the root tip is out intact, it seems. We always check with an x-ray after to be 100% sure that everything is out and that we didn't leave any bone fragments or anything else down there. I use the same burr to smooth the edges and notice that I, I, I don't remove bone. See on, to, on the ventral aspect here, there's a shelf, a little shelf of bone where my sutures can lay on top of that. And that's what we want. So don't remove bone all the way out to the edge of uh, to, to where you cut the gingiva because the sutures will be floating in mid-air. We don't want sutures to float or the knots, I mean, we don't want the knots to float in mid-air. We want them to rest on a little shelf of bone. So here is my post-op x-ray. I'm taking that. All right, so I was happy with the x-ray. And you see how the blood fills the alveolus pretty fast and that's perfect. That's what that's just what we want. We don't want to try and stop it because we like a blood clot to form. So grab the mucosa here. Make sure you see I'm pushing with my forceps onto the mucosa here to make sure that the needle exits the mucosa at a 90 degree angle. And that's how, in general, you can avoid dehiscence. Because if you come in at a too steep angle, too oblique, then it, it will pull through. So you always want to make sure that you enter and exit your gums or your mucosa at a 90 degree angle with your needle. So lift up here. And now I'm pushing again, see? to make that 90 degree angle. And you want to place the sutures two to three millimeters apart and do a surgeon's knot with an extra throw. So usually the double throw and then three on top of that. Now it becomes very handy that you actually release this part. See the, the gingival part here? Remember you took your periosteal elevator down there and released it, loosened it from the bone. If you didn't do that, you would not be able to place that suture at a 90 degree angle. You could place the suture, but it would scrape against the bone. It would be placed at an oblique angle and that would uh, not be very good. All right, let's... Let's fast forward a little bit. Again, placing the sutures two to three millimeters apart. Make one double throw, then one, two, and three throws on that. So I skipped to the mesial part of this tooth because I placing a suture closer to the other one would be a little bit difficult with the attached gingiva to the tooth. So I choose to uh, make the distance a little longer than those two to three millimeters. And notice here, there will be a tiny gap after I suture. It was not really possible to suture it completely closed and um, I didn't want to do any extra flap work to try and, and make that last part sit completely uh, reach each other, those uh, gingival ends. This will just uh, heal very quickly. This is a puppy and it, it did very good afterwards. So that should not be a problem. All right, so I hope this video was useful.
and I wish you the best of luck for your next persistent deciduous tooth surgical extraction.